Hi, I'm Jeffrey Blackwell. I'm president of the Rogers Company. Rogers Company is a visual marketing company specializing in designing and building exhibits and environments for trade shows. We also manage the trade show programs for our clients. And I'm here today with the president of Trade Show Logistics, Ms. B.J. Entright. Trade Show Logistics is a show general contractor, and we thought for purposes of educating and helping our clients understand the cost of exhibiting at trade shows that we would have a dialogue between us regarding why do things cost what they cost and how can we per perhaps as exhibitors and as show contractors reduce our rates or help our clients reduce their cost of going to shows because after all going to a trade show is a very expensive proposition and one today that's being scrutinized more closely than perhaps it has been for years. So we're hoping with this dialogue and conversation between BJ and myself, we can help you understand why you're paying what you're paying and how you might be able to lower the cost going forward. Yeah. BJ, for most clients, the cost of drage is really a hot button. Can you explain what is drage? Dra drage is actually really simple. It's really just the moving of a box, moving of your shipment from the dock to your booth, then taking away your empty containers, putting them into storage, bringing those empty containers back, and then reloading your shipment back onto the truck at the close of the show. So it's Very a material simple. handling fee. It's a material handling fee. Both, both terms are used. Okay. So why is it such a point of contention? Why do so many people get upset when they get their drage bill? The, the reason that, it's, that it is such a bone of contention is that it's confusing and it's expensive. There can be as many as tw at 24 different rates that you could possibly pay for your material handling. Each of those surcharges come with at least a 25% fee and unfortunately in a lot of cases you don't as the exhibitor control the variables that are going to put you into a surcharge situation. For example, if you ship your materials to the advanced warehouse, which is an excellent idea to do, it could get all delivered to the sh show site on overtime. And you may not have even known that because you weren't even in the building. So but there's more to drage in terms of what it's covering overall in the grander scheme of things of a show. Right. So as a show contractor, you're getting paid for drage, but what is what are those funds being used to cover in terms of the show itself? So drainage is really covering a lot of the other costs. A general contractor does not charge, as an example, for their designers and the account managers that plan the event and the, all the people and foremen. So unfortunately, drainage has sort of become the funder. What can show organizers, show owners do to lower the drainage rates or some of the other fees even associated with shows I think they need to put themselves in their exhibitor's shoes. And they really need to think about what are their exhibitor's costs. Not just what is it going to cost me for the aisle carpet and, and the facility rental, but what is it going to cost my exhibitors. And sometimes show managers don't think about the schedule. When they book the facility, that because of the way the schedule fell, they may make it impossible for the move-in to happen on any other time but overtime. And if, it, if the show moves in and out on overtime, that can greatly impact the exhibitor's expenses. Show organizers should also look at the different cities. Uh, union jurisdictions in each city and rates vary greatly from city to city. So is it feasible for the owners of the shows, the show mm -hmm. organizers, the associations, to tell exhibitors when they sign up and make their floor space commitment what the rates are going to be for next year's show so that we can create budgets that are viable. I think it's very feasible for the show organizers to provide hourly rates and 100 weight rates. A, a lot of good show organizers put that information in their exhibitor prospectus or put it up you know, on their website and make it available to exhibitors. I think the challenge becomes that exhibitors really need to understand what their requirements are so that they can properly budget and and I would always budget for the worst and then plan for the best plan budget for your show moving in and out on overtime budget for your your freight being coming in at special handling or uncrated you know plan for some surcharges in there and then and then call your contractor 
or call your vendors, your suppliers, your exhibitor appointed contractor, and ask them, as you get closer, once that kit comes out, ask them to help you put your budget together. Pull your last year's history information together, give it to your suppliers, speak openly and honestly with your suppliers, and then put together a budget and then, and then try to stick to it. Do you agree with me, though, that when, again, as an exhibitor, when I'm signing up and making that commitment to next year's show and, and committing to the floor space, mm -hmm. that at that time I should know what those rates are going to be? I think there's no reason you couldn't. Because know. in many times, I'm creating a budget for next year's show this year, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have the ability to wait until the show book comes out so that I can go in and check what this year's or next year's rates are going to be. I need to know this year because otherwise management is going to throw my budget right out the window. Yeah, I think unless, um, as long as, and let's just use drayage again since that's a point of contention, as long as drayage has so many surcharges, it still becomes difficult. That's true. That's right, very because true. you're not managing all those different variables. You could have budgeted based upon seventy-five dollars a hundred weight, and you could have ended up paying one hundred and fifty dollars a hundred weight right. if you came in on overtime or got hit with special handling or what have you. So, so if show managers went to a net rate, and general contractors went to more of a this is all-encompassing rate, then yes, it would make it easier to budget. But what most general contractors will tell you is that that hurts the guy who came in on straight time, straight time. It saves the guy who came in on overtime, overtime, he, he wins, but the guy who came in on straight time, straight time lost. Well, and I, I personally, I'd be willing to pay a little bit more in order to have budget certainty than to pay less and hope that I came in on straight time and out uh, on straight I, time. I think I agree with that because I think what happens is you, you put yourself as an exhibit manager in the position of asking either permission or forgiveness. Right. And if you go in with, as you said, you're planning for the worst and hoping right. for the best, if you go in and you let management know, this is worst case. Right. You know, I've, I've factored right. everything in right. so that even if it's on overtime, right. you know, even if it took them 20% longer to hang right. my hanging sign, I plan for that. Yep. So the, the worst case scenario is it's going to be what I've got on this page. Best case is it may be lower. Right.